So it is very hard to believe, but we are officially in the year of 2022, and I do hope that you all had a very happy New Year's and got a day off to relax and enjoy it with some loved ones. But in today's video, I do want to discuss and hop through my highlighted 2021 Nintendo Switch games and actually stack rank my top five favorite from the year as we look back at Nintendo Switch releases in 2021. What's up, nation? If it's your first time on the channel, make sure you join Sunbro Nation by subscribing below, hit the like button on this video if you enjoy it today, and make sure you turn on your bell notification icon so you're kept up to date with all the newest gaming news. Now, as I mentioned, guys, we're doing a little bit different video today as I want to fondly look back and stack rank my top five Nintendo Switch titles for the year of 2021. And the first one on the list today is none other than Cruise and Blast. And this is a surprise entry for me because I didn't have like all the hype in the world leading up to this release as I'm just typically not into racing games, but I did have a lot of nostalgia for this game as it released on the N64 originally back in the day. And this is a separate iteration of that, but it still was one that had some nostalgia for me. I love unrealistic racing games. Well, I'm not the biggest fan of your traditional ones. I am a fan of unrealistic. So before I talk any more about it, I do want to quickly hop into the gameplay. Again, this will be ranked. So Cruise and Blast does come in at number five on my list today. So right out of the gate, you can pretty much see what kind of fun and unrealistic style this game has to offer. I mean, you're this is not one of those games that you're going to take ultra seriously. It's definitely more of like, I, I guess you could kind of compare it to Mario Kart in the sense that it's like an unrealistic, you know, racer where you're trying to come in first, but it's really not Mario Kart. It's something totally different because you're in obviously like crazy vehicles. I just totally wrecked that guy. Um, it's just a lot of fun. You know, I can, I can, uh, if I can get up close enough to another car, I can backflip off of it. Different vehicles and things. You have all types of crazy boosts that you can do. If I can actually hit this guy, come on, there we go. And then, uh, yeah, just do all types of like crazy unrealistic flips and tricks. It's a ton of fun. Uh, you will get, you know, slammed from time to time. It's very fast paced. Like you definitely feel Feel like you're part of the racing action and i just can't recommend this game enough i think like we just had it on sale in the eShop for like half price and i think that that actually just ended uh the other day but i'm sure that we'll see it go back on sale again it retails for 40 bucks uh but of course if you if you were fortunate enough to get it on sale that's definitely the preferred way to go about it but with that you have ridiculous cars you have like next level i think you can you can race as um uh, all types of different creatures, a unicorn and different stuff like that. I mean, it's definitely like <laughs> it's the furthest thing from realistic, but I, I will tell you guys that it is just uh, tremendous fun through and through. The one complaint and gripe I think that you can say is that it definitely launched light on content. I mean, in terms of just the overall everything that, that it has to offer. Uh, I do think that they're going to continue to update it over the course of time. And in fact, uh, the big missing feature that needs to be added to this game that is heavily rumored now is online play because I think playing online, providing we don't have any kind of laggy experience, if it's like what Mario Kart 8 Deluxe has to offer with online play, this will be a must pick up. And I do also hope that we will see additional courses, levels, cars, and things like that added in as well as I do think this game actually performed better than maybe what the developers initially planned it to. So I, it's, I'm hopeful that we're going to get more Cruise and Blast content, but definitely encourage encourage you guys to check out my number five game of the year in 2021, which is Cruise and Blast. Now coming in at number four on the list is none other than Mario Party Superstars. And it's for the reason that exactly what you are seeing right now, it is me playing classic mini games that I grew up with that I have heavy nostalgia for and absolutely love. And I can play on a traditional controller, which is a huge win for me because if you guys aren't familiar, the Super Mario Party that came to the Switch before this had forced Joy-Con play and almost all of the games or most of them anyway, were based around motion controls. And while I'm not anti-motion controls I like to have it as an option not as the only option so for me personally I have had more fun with this Mario Party game with family friends uh, all that good stuff than I've had in in years you know and I remember a lot of these mini games as I mentioned I have super nostalgia for them I hope they just keep the same formula and continue to give us new Mario Parties but continue to allow us you know button control play because it was of course around the Wii era they got heavily focused into uh, the motion gameplay which again is is like sometimes fun there's certain mini games that pull it off but when it's all based around motion i lack you know some of the fun experience that you get with the precision of a controller tapping the button as fast as you can all that good stuff so for me personally mario party superstars is a great value 
They also did a lot of uh, kind of like uh, quality of life improvements in the sense that one online play is available out of the gate. We had to wait a couple years to to actually get that on the uh, uh, Super Mario Party on the Switch. And it was funny because nobody thought that Nintendo would go back and update that game. And like three years later, they just decided to add in online play, which of course is a very Nintendo thing to do. But regardless, uh, you know, I think that besides the basic updates like online, out of the gate, all that good stuff, you also have... Uh, you, uh, this is getting a little intense here. Yeah, get out of my face, Donkey Kong. All right, now let's check out Rosalina right behind. Come on, we got it. You also have stuff like where you can uh, pause... Uh, pause the mini board pause the mini game board and come back to it which i thought was a really cool thing because sometimes you just have like a friend you're in an intense game and something comes up you got to pause it and then it can take you out of the whole experience now you can pause it save that board as one of like five or ten different boards that you can just essentially do a save state on and then come back to it later so mario party superstars is a ton of fun can't recommend it enough if you haven't picked it up yet i would highly recommend you all to check it out it is very much a friends and family type of game where you'll want to have people to play with that's definitely where the fun is at i never boot this thing up by myself other than for you know this video reason uh being really the first time i've played through mini games against cpus but if you got friends over you got family over and you all want to have a great time mario party superstars is a very enjoyable game and my number four game on nintendo switch library in 2021 and number three on our list today is none other than Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. And while you could argue that really Bowser's Fury is the only brand new content as far as being released in 2021, and I would agree with you on that because I actually played through uh, Mario uh, 3D World back on the Wii U. Super enjoyed that game. Very fun to co-op with friends as you can do up to four players, of course. And, you know, I just really loved Bowser's Fury for the simple... Uh, for the simple mechanic of having the idea of an open world Mario, as I just think that that is going to be a very cool thing once we see it happen, and I hope it happens sooner rather than later. And in my opinion, this kind of feels like the beta test for that because it's really the first time we've seen a, uh, not necessarily open world, but open zoned Mario. And I can see them absolutely, oh, and there we go. I just died right there. But, you know, I can see them pulling this off in a mainline Mario game, maybe Odyssey 2 or whatever the future holds, where they actually do try to have that breath of the wild moment and they connect all the mario you know lands together uh in terms of not having to switch between levels each time and i just think it'd be a really you know exciting thing to see them pull off and attempt to do and the gameplay is just top notch on this you know you have um of course bowser jr with you you kind of have some references to mario sunshine which is really honestly my favorite 3d mario of all time even though i know that's not the typical fan favorite it just st sticks out to me as one of the my most enjoyable in terms of the gameplay the level design and what it has to offer as a whole but um yes i will tell you guys that i enjoyed this start to finish definitely fun to boot it back up and check it out again for a moment uh again being a long-term mario fan i want to see them kind of tinker around with a different formula and different mechanic and that's kind of what this is in my opinion is it is definitely a test of what mario would be like if you put him in an open zone layout and um you know i would love to hear from you guys if you pick this one up and what you thought of it because i enjoyed it from start to finish but before we die anymore as you can see there's definitely some difficulty to it and you definitely have some crazy bowser fights too when he awakens and you know it's giga bowser or whatever you want to call him super saiyan metal bowser like that dude is awesome and um i, I just really enjoyed this game all through and through so you guys let me know in the comments down below if you've checked it out yet and what you'd like to see from the future of the Mario series as you know if you're a fan of the open layout and giant open worlds where everything is connected like we see here or if you just want them you know to, to stick to the more uh, linear style where you just have a level selection screen and all of that good stuff but definitely super enjoy Bowser's Fury and Mario 3D World uh, on the Nintendo Switch in 2021 coming in at number three. Now coming in at number two on our list today is none other than Zelda Skyward Sword and you guys should know by now that I'm a huge Legend of Zelda fan and I actually loved this game on the Wii but I had a big problem with it and that was the fact that you had to play with the motion controls and you had no other options to do button and of course Nintendo addressed that here as I'm playing it currently on the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller with no problems and then they even added in the ability to look around you know 3D without any problems by holding the L button which you know might feel a little bit off to some people and there's still people who prefer to play this game uh, with with your traditional uh, button control or with your um, uh, traditional 
motion control from the Wii version rather, but it, for me personally, I really do enjoy this game from start to finish with the button control layout. And the big deal is, is that if you are a Legend of Zelda fan, the lore that is in this game is just next level as it is the origin story for the entire series. And I really think that you have to go through and actually you go experience it yourself i mean it's it's truly one of the most beautiful stories out there and i think that you will have a ton of fun that said anybody who came in from the zelda series from breath of the wild this is a very different experience than that and just kind of a disclaimer there because this is probably one of the most linear stories in the way that like you have to go to each certain spot of the game in a certain section and i mean almost every zelda game is primarily linear but you can sometimes conquer a dungeon or two out of order um things like that but this is not open world by any means it's definitely uh, I would say one of the more traditional formula Zelda games. And I still don't think it's like my all time favorite 3D Zelda by any means, other than I will say it probably has one of the best, most compelling stories in all of them. So if you're into the lore type stuff, you're into some great gameplay, some great boss fights, puzzles, everything that traditional Zelda has to offer, definitely don't sleep on Skyward Sword HD. This is absolutely one of the premier ports that Nintendo chose to bring to the Switch. And I'm still holding out hope that we will get Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD HD one day but in the meantime you can at least enjoy this Wii classic re originally released in 2011 now re-released in 2021 so uh it's skyward sword hd through and through definitely worth a pickup at 60 dollars in my opinion and i hope that you guys have gotten a chance to play this game already and if not maybe this will be uh something to consider for your own personal game list of 2021 legend of zelda skyward sword now, coming in at number one on my list and definitively my game of the year for 2021 is none other than Metroid Dread. And I'm actually at right now at the time of filming this video, starting my hard mode playthrough, which I am very much looking forward to. I may not complete the entire thing right now, you know, depending on what comes up as far as the, the schedule and everything. But regardless, I'm going to kind of off and on start to play through this and hopefully do another 100% run as on normal mode, it was hard enough, but I'm expecting even more of a challenge on hard mode. And I did hear from some people talking online that it's really not like a day and night difference. It's just that the enemies damage you a little bit more. So I'm hopeful that this time around, I'll be able to uh, to survive hard mode, which it is kind of a daunting task, actually, because uh, it, things are pretty hard at the end of like this run through on the last game. Like the, that final boss on Metroid Dread is pretty next level ridiculous, like his movements and how fast everything goes. And I won't spoil anything for you guys. I wanted to only show you kind of like early game uh, gameplay just in the interest of in case if you haven't picked up and played through this game yet. There is a lot of abilities, a lot of power-ups that you unlock along the way. I definitely think it's just one of the most enjoyable through and through Metroid experiences that you can have. In fact, I would say that this is maybe my all-time favorite Metroid game other than Metroid Prime 1, just because of the incredible nostalgia I have for that title specifically. But I do think that this is up there and it's definitely my top tier 2D Metroid. And while I am saying that 2D, you do see there's quite a bit of 3D cutscenes and some great storytelling. And if you're in to metroid lore at all this is a must own for you because some of the things that are revealed in this are really incredible and as i mentioned i'll keep it 100 spoiler free but i can't wait to do another 100 run on metroid dread on hard mode i do know that another thing that comes up is the gameplay uh, time in terms of like how long does it take you to uh, complete this game and i will tell you guys that i spent about uh, 16, 17 hours, something like that on my first playthrough. And that wasn't even getting all the 100% done. So, you know, a lot of people do say if you really know what you're doing, which I felt like I did, but I, apparently I just moved slow or died too many times, whatever the case is. Some people say you can beat the game in seven or eight hours on your first playthrough. That definitely wasn't my experience. I got a solid 16, 17 hours out of it. Uh, then still going back and getting like the 100% stuff finished was additional besides that. So for me personally, this is more than worth it at $50. It's definitely definitely my 2021 game of the year and i would encourage you guys to check it out if you haven't in fact there is a free eShop demo that i made a previous video on and i can definitely recommend you guys to at least pick up the demo although i will say that this game gets deeper as you go and it's not going to be something that you can really get the full experience of the demo but guys at this point in the video i want to hear from you on all the different things we talked about today give me your personal list on how you would stack rank 2021 for nintendo and their lineups and which games that you personally enjoyed the most so I do look forward to hearing from you guys on your own personal top five. And then let me know if you had a good New Year's as well, as I do look forward to getting a back and forth conversation started with you all around these topics.
Thanks so much for watching the video today, everyone. I do truly appreciate you all sticking around until the end. I do at this point in the video want to invite you all one more time to join Sunburn Nation if you haven't done so already. Do so by subscribing below. Hit the like button on your way out if you enjoyed it today. And make sure you turn on your bell notification icon so you're kept up to date with all the newest gaming news. That's going to do it for me, guys. I hope you all have a great day. Sunburn Nation, out.